couple day trips and you know do some things outside of the house which will be nice but I really need to get my yard in in order it is such a mess right now so that's kind of my plan is to use spring break to be outside so that'll be nice yeah doing a little spring cleaning yep yep but not in the house I am not I, I don't like the in the house stuff I like the outside stuff so get some sun on the you know the fish belly white body <laughs> get some vitamin D so okay so let's go ahead um, I'm looking at our schedule and um, we have um, just this week so if you truly truly want um, a real spring break um, then get your get the two assignments that are due this oh I'm sorry the oh this is a different class. I'm so sorry. So we have our test on Thursday and then nothing due the Monday you get back from spring break. So um, so that's good. So you guys truly have a, a spring break. One of my biggest pet peeves being in college was um, when instructors would give you an assignment like the week before spring break and then you have to have it done by the time you get back. And so it's like you have homework over spring break. It just drove me nuts. So I vowed I would never do that to my students. So you guys truly have a, a real spring break. Um, with math, I feel like that's very much needed. You kind of need a break from the, the thinking and um, just kind of rest your brain a little bit. And then then we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish strong. Um, so test on Thursday nothing due the next week or the next Monday um, after spring break. So you'll come back from spring break and we'll we'll jump back into um, chapter 11. So chapter 11 is our optimization chapter. And so we're gonna take everything that you learned, all those tools in um, chapter 10 and put them into an, <clears throat> excuse me, an optimization type. Sorry, sorry, I ate something right before class. I'm, I'm not uh, optimization type problem, which means optimization just means our maximum and our minimums. So um, we'll do a lot of a lot of finding max and min um, when we get back. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to start with just some um, review, and um, I have this. So let me share my screen here. Um, I have, <clears throat> well, I have this, I, I call it, it's a PowerPoint that I created. And so um, it's in your, it's in your um, Canvas class under module two, and it's also got the solutions. So you'll get the solutions here, we'll work on them, and then you can do, um, do it again. Also, before I forget, there is, sorry, there is a, um, oh my gosh, hang on, trying to get to our class. Um, in your module, there is another review that you can do. So you have plenty, plenty, plenty of practice to do. So this is module two. If you scroll down, you go to uh, test two review and solutions. So when you click on that, here is one of the reviews. So this is this is one where it's written in the same font that you'll see on Thursday. Um, it looks the same. Obviously on Thursday, you'll have lots more room, but um, one through 10 is just all the different um, tools that you're gonna use. You'll have the chain rule, you'll have um, the quotient rule, you'll have the product rule, and then you have the four, excuse me, the four specialty rules. Remember 11 through 15, don't worry about those. We'll, we'll look at those um, in chapter 11. We get into a little bit into second derivative. So don't worry about 11 to 15. And then jump down to 16 through 21. And this is your implicit differentiation and then related rates types pro type problems. So this review, this paper review is a really good um, idea of what you will see on your test. You'll see there's there's uh, 10 questions on the test on Thursday. So, um, you know, you have an hour and 15 minutes, so you have to be quick. You can't just kind of dilly-dally or spend too much time on any one problem. So basically, figure six minutes a problem. 
So what I would do is, um, you know, sit down, do this review. And um, once you get to 10 problems, look at the clock and see how long it took you to do 10 problems. Um, and then you can kind of feel what the pace is going to be like for, um, for the test. So you want to make sure that you are um, comfortable with everything. Make sure that you know, like on number five, if you look at number five, it's a combination, right? It's the product rule, but it's also the chain rule embedded in it. So make sure that you can identify that. Um, number uh, seven is the chain rule with um, a polynomial, but then also the chain rule with E. So make sure you know how to how to read that also. And then in your in that same uh, tab in module two, here's your solutions. And I've had people print these up so that you have them as you're working through the review, or you can just have it open and you can take a look at it. Um, the best way to do it is do the review and then check it and see how you did. And then you'll know, oh, I need more work on the chain rule, or I need more work on the quotient rule, or I need more work on implicit differentiation. So that way you know what you need to review, okay? So those are though, that is a really good option. What we're doing today is this test two review. It's a PowerPoint. Um, and so um, we're gonna go ahead and, and work through those today, um, just to give you an idea of the types of problems that you're gonna see, okay? So any questions on the test? What's required for the test? Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna kind of walk through these, um, this chapter, uh, chapter 10 um, assignments. And um, in class, again, in class, if it was face-to-face, -face, that's what the professionals and apprentices are. We do a, an activity with it. But since we're in Zoom, we'll have to do it a little bit differently. So what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to just walk through and I, I am going to ask you questions. So make sure you're ready um, to you know, hear your name. I'm trying to keep you guys as engaged as, po as, as possible. Um, one of the things that um, the students um, did on this particular one in class was they kind of confused themselves. Um, they thought that they had to use all the special rules and the product rule for each of these. So I thought, well, this is a good a good time to to identify how do you know what to use when? Okay. So on A, if you see you have three different, you have three different terms. If there's minuses and pluses in between, you're not multiplying those. Okay. So you would not use the product rule. You would just use the basic different diff derivative rules um, for each term. Okay, so so Evan, what would you get when you you when you find the derivative of four x to the third power? What would that be? Say that one more time. Four x. Um, yeah, what would you get for this? Just this first term, the derivative of just this first term, four x cubed. What's the derivative of that? And if you're talking, I can't hear you. You probably have to unmute yourself. Did I lose you? Oh, my bad, my bad. Um, oh, my bad. Sorry, I was made to solve that one. Um, just the first term, just the first term. Uh, all right. So just for X cubed. Wouldn't it be 12 X squared? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, just 12 X to the what power? To the squared, right? Yep, to the second power, good. So again, this is our power rule. So this is fair game. All, all of these rules are fair game for this test. You have to know when to identify it. So one thing that, that was brought up yesterday was how do you know when to use like the power rule or 
when you have b raised to the x power. So the huge, the biggest difference is if you have an exponent that's a number, you're going to use the power rule, right? Because your base, the x is your base, the unknown is your base, where when you use this derivative of b to the x, that's like saying 3 raised to the x power. The difference is now our exponent is the variable and our base is the number. So there's a very clear distinction between these two. If x is in the base and the exponent is a number, you're going to use the power rule. If the base is a number and your exponent is the x, you're going to use this exponential function rule. Okay? All right. Uh, Brian, what about the next one? What about 3e e to the x? What would you write for that? Derivative for that. I know I saw him come in. Yeah, I'm right here. Sorry. Oh, okay. Give me one sec. So the four special rules are up here in this little box. So would it be d over dx next to negative three? Um, yeah, so what all we're doing is because we're just using these these basic rules, power rule, or one of these four specialty rules, we don't have to do the ddx thing um, because we're finding it in terms of x already. The ddx comes in when we're doing implicit differentiation when you have different variables. But as you can see, all of these, the variables are all x's. So we're good. We don't have to walk through all of that. This ddx just says what's the derivative of e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So the negative 3 is going to come alongside it, and it's just going to be repeated. So it's negative 3 e to the x. All right. Okay. And then plus, and then here's our log. So we're going to look here for the log. And we're just going to remember, this is just like a formula, right? We're just plugging in where it goes. So whatever the x is, is going to go on the bottom. And whatever the base is, is going to be ln of base. So it's going to be 1 over, and then our x is our 30. And our ln, or our base, is 5. And there's really nothing else we can do to this. This is about all we can do just setting it up. Okay, so we use the power rule, we use the e to the x rule, and we used our log, derivative of a log. Okay, so it's identifying it. e is gonna be e, log is gonna be log. If I have ln, which I do on the next one, we're gonna use the ln. If I have b to the x, I'm gonna use b to the x. Okay, so this is our derivative for a, for b, I have ln of x, so ln of x. So Dylan, what's the derivative of ln of x? It is x, correct, or 1. So ln of x, derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. OK, so it's just identifying. Oh, OK, we have ln. I'm looking for the derivative of ln. It's 1 over x, right? And then um, let's see, Javier, what about 3 raised to the x power? What's the derivative of that? Uh, 3. So we're looking here, right? This is our b to the x. I know we haven't seen these in a while. This is our b to the x. So b is your base. X oh, I'm sorry, it would be ln, ln 3. It would be this whole thing. So we, we repeat the 3 to the x, and then ln times whatever our base is. Okay, so take a look at this. ln of x is ln of x. The derivative is 1 over x ln of a base raised to the x power is our base raised to the x power is b raised to the x power times ln of whatever the base is. So 3 raised to the x power times ln of whatever the base is. OK? 
Okay. So, um, and again, remember, you don't have to have these memorized. These will be on your formula sheet. So hopefully you have a way to have your formula sheet um, printed for you um, on Thursday. So you have it right there with you. Okay. All right. So C and D are product rules, right? So this is our first term. This is our second term. This is our first term. This is our second term. So whenever you see product rule, you need four cast of characters. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna start changing colors on you. So my first on C, this is C. The first is five e to the x. And then the derivative of five e to the x is just five e to the x. You just repeat it because it's an e function. The second one is 2x cubed plus 1. So the derivative of that is just 3 times 2 is 6x squared. Okay. So the minute you see you have two different things that you're multiplying together, and there's really nothing you can do with this. You can't push that e to that 5e e to the x through, and you can't push 5 raised to the x through to the ln. They're two separate things. Um, so you have to use the product rule. Okay, so here we go. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first <clears throat> times the derivative of the second. Okay, now this right here is a perfectly good answer. If you, this was a test question, this would be a great answer. Nothing wrong with this. But if you want extra credit, you can go ahead and factor out a 5e e to the x. And what's left is 2x cubed plus 1 plus 6x squared. And that's all you can do. There's no like terms here. You can't work it out. You could write it in descending order. That's just more common. But you wouldn't necessarily have to. So this right here would be, either one of these would be extra credit. Okay, but this right here gives you full, oops, full points for the test question. Okay, what I'm looking for is can you identify, oh, this is the product rule. Can you get all four cast of characters and can you put them in the right position? That's what I'm looking for, right? This here is um, simplifying it. So any questions on that one? Okay, and then the last one for D, I again have a product rule, so I'm going to set up my four cast of characters. So my first character is 5 raised to the x power. This is a product rule, I'm sorry, a uh, exponential function. So the derivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x times ln of 5. And that goes back to those uh, special derivatives. The second function is ln of x. The derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. Okay, so all of these different rules come into play. And I and there, there can be any combination of them. All right, so now we're going to put it into our uh, product. I'm sorry, for, yeah, for C, um, so there was two 5e e to the x's, and like there's the plus. Wouldn't it be 10e e to the x multiply? I'm, I'm just confused there. Um, no, because the, this is a multiplication. We're not adding them. And we're multiplying 5e e to the x times 6x squared. So what I'm doing is I'm factoring out 1 5e e to the x. It goes back to that idea of factoring out a greatest common factor. 
Okay. Okay. If you had, here, I'll write it over here. If you had, so the difference would be if you had 5e to the x plus 5e to the x, then yes, this would be 10e to the x. Okay, because you have two separate things. But the minute you attach that to whatever it was, um, to something else, now this is considered a term. Okay, yeah, I, I see now. You see it? Okay. All right, let me erase this. Let me go back to the other one. That was, that was actually a good question though, Gabriel. I'm glad you asked that. Um, okay, so here we go. Do we have the, the first derivative of the first, the second derivative of the second? So now I'm just gonna put it into the right spot, right? So we have derivative of the first <clears throat> times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, okay? So again, this right here is a perfectly good answer. Nothing wrong with it. Really, the only simplification I could have is this 5x over x, but it doesn't really do me any good to do that. For extra credit, you could factor out that 5 raised to the x power, and then what's left is ln of 5 times ln of x plus um, 5, oh, sorry, plus 1 over x. And that's really all you can do for this one. There's not a whole lot of simplification that you can do. <coughs> Excuse me. So any questions on this one? <clears throat> okay, so since we hadn't seen these four specialty ones in a while, I wanted to take the time to kind of go over those one more time. <clears throat> so with the quotient rule, I'm only going to do a couple of them. And then if you want more practice, you can look at the answer that is in the module. You can see the rest of them. But today I'm only going to do um, two of them so that we have time for, for the other stuff. <clears throat> okay, so quotient rule. Again, four cast of characters. And the reason why I started teaching it this way is because the students were getting really confused as to what goes where and when. But if you look at it as, okay, I just have four things that I got to deal with. And then I'm going to plug it into this formula, this quotient rule formula. And that way there's not a lot of um, confusion. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Our first term is the top. The derivative of the top is just one, right? Derivative of x is just one. <clears throat> the second is the bottom. So x minus one. Derivative of x minus 1 is just, again, 1. Get a little clear. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just going to put it in the, in the right positions. So derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second all over the second one squared, okay? So with quotient rule, remember, the only thing you really have to do is just leave the bottom the same, just keep it what it is. You don't have to do anything with it. And all you have to do is simplify the top. So the bottom stays the same. And the top, one times x minus one is just x minus one. And then you can do a couple different things. With this minus x plus one, you can push that negative through the parentheses and then multiply by one, or you can bring this one to the front and multiply it through. So negative one times x is negative x. 
negative one times one is a negative one. Okay, so you can see that your x's go away. You have a positive x and a negative x. And then negative one and a negative one is negative two over x minus one squared. And that is the quotient rule. That's using the quotient rule. Okay, so the top you need to clean up, the bottom you can keep it the way it sits. <clears throat> okay, any questions on that one? All right, and then I wanted to do C because remember I always say if you can get out of the quotient rule, get out of it. You can use it, it totally works but there's a lot more work to it. So anytime you have a monomial on the bottom, you can just simplify, right? This 20x 20, 20 to the fifth divided by x squared becomes 20x cubed, and then negative 4x cubed divided by x squared becomes negative 4x. So now I have 20x cubed minus 4x, this is my function, and then it makes my derivative so much easier. So three times 20 is 60 X squared minus four. And that is the derivative. So with this one, I did not need, I did not need to use the quotient rule. I could have, but I didn't have to. And so you simplify it, you divide that X squared into both. So this X squared goes into both, right? It's under both of those and then you can use the power rule, okay? So definitely know how to use the, the quotient rule, but if you can get out of it, get out of it. Any questions on that one? <clears throat> if I had done the quotient rule with this one, it would have been long and involved, and it would have there would have been many, many places to make a mistake. And that's why I always look for um, if I if I don't have to do it, okay? All right, so if you had a test, give me a thumbs up. If you had a test on just these two parts, the derivatives, the four special derivatives, the product and the chain rule, how many of you feel like you would get um, an 80 or above? Put, give me a thumbs up. 80 or above just on the four special product and quotient rule. I have a few. Mahmoud, you're not answering me. Do you think you'd do okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Nathaniel, how about you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know about 80, maybe a, maybe a 77, 75. <laughs> So, okay, so you're being honest with yourself. Okay, all right, I got you. So what we can do to um to make sure that you get the 80 or above is you just have to practice. And the biggest thing is being able to recognize it, being able to recognize what it is that you're looking at, and then which rule do you use for which one? That's going to be the biggest, the biggest um, frustration. Okay, chain rule. Here we go. So I have the, the basic rule, the chain rule, right? Remember we do derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside. And then these two are considered chain rule. Um, and it's because we have e raised to a function. So e raised to a function is you repeat it. So that's the derivative of the outside and then times the derivative of the function itself. So that's the derivative of the inside. So that's why this is all part of the chain rule, because anytime you have the function itself times the derivative of the function, that's the chain rule. And then when you have ln of a, fun of a function, it's the derivative of the function divided by the function itself. So we'll see that on, on um, all of these, okay? All right, so chain rule. First thing we have to do is we cannot find a derivative of a radical, okay? That doesn't work. So we have to rewrite this. So under the radical is your set of parentheses. 
then the radical itself, so this is all in one, one term, and it's raised to the first power. Okay, so if it's raised to the first power, that exponent is one over three. So remember, you drop that three right underneath. Okay, so make sure you remember how to change a radical to a fractional exponent. And now I can use the chain rule. So the chain rule says, this is, um, the chain rule says you drop your exponent to the front and multiply. So you rewrite what's inside the parentheses, and then you're going to subtract one. So in this case, R1 is you're subtracting three thirds. So it becomes <clears throat> negative two thirds. Because one third minus three thirds is negative two thirds. Okay. What I just did is this part. I got the derivative of the outside. I peeled that one third off, right? Now I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, okay? You see the g of x function is inside. So I need to find the derivative of the inside. So here is the inside. So the derivative of three x squared is just six x. Okay, derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And now I can multiply one third and six x. So one third times six x or a third of six x is two x. Okay, and the way I got that is six divided by three is two. Okay, so 2x, and then I just rewrite what's left. Okay, so again, this is a perfectly good answer. That works. If you want <clears throat> extra credit on the test, you would write it as 2x over 3x squared minus 5, and it is the cube root. Oops, that should be a 3, not a 2. The cube root. of that squared. Okay, so the numerator is the, in, the exponent, the index is the denominator, and so this again is a perfectly good answer, but if you want extra credit you can write it this way. 2x over the cube root of 3x squared minus 5 squared. So it's just being real comfortable going back and forth between that radical and the fractional exponent and then back again. So any questions on that? I have two birds out my front window that are trying to build a nest. <laughs> they keep coming and sitting by my window. Maybe they want to learn math. I don't know. Who knows? All right. We good? <clears throat> okay. Yes. Next one. Okay. Good, 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 good. Sorry. The next one, we have 5x to the 7th minus 2 raised to the 8th power. So 5x to the 7th minus 2 raised to the 8th power. Again, it's the chain rule. So I'm going to peel this 8 off and put it in the front and multiply. Subtracting 1. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So 5x to the 7th is 35x to the 6th. And then I can multiply 8 times, <clears throat> eight times 35 is 280. So we got 280 x to the 6th times 5 x to the 7th minus 2 to the 7th power. And that is all we can do. That's it. So that's our derivative. Okay, so chain rule on those two types, all right? Not too bad? That's fine. Okay. All right, so C and D, we're going to use our specialty ones. So these two specialty chain rules with exponential and log functions. So we have E raised to a function. So we have E raised to the function. So our derivative is E raised to the same function times the derivative of the function. So the derivative of 3x squared minus 4 is just 6x. Okay, so I can rewrite this as 6x e 
to the 3x squared minus 4. And I'm done. Okay, but this part is this. And this part is this part. So think of it as a formula. You have all the information you need on this on these um, um, formula sheets. Okay. So D, I'm going to move over here because it's a little bit more involved. Let me move over a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to do D over here. All right. So we have a couple things going on. We have ln of 5x times 2x plus 1 raised to the fifth power. So I'm going to move it over more so I have more room. Okay, so we have two things going on. We have our first and we have our second. So we're doing the product rule with the chain rule embedded. Okay, so we have a lot going on. So this is where knowing what to do when really helps. And it's just an identification thing. So the first one is ln of 5x. Remember the derivative of ln of a function is the derivative of the function over the function. So this just gets reduced to one over x. Okay. So that is, let me go back to it. That is this one right here, this specialty chain rule. Derivative of the function over the actual function. And then you simplify. All right, the second one is our 2x plus 1 to the fifth. And so the derivative of that is the chain rule. So bring your 5 down, raised to the fourth power, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. So this becomes 10 times 2x plus 1 raised to the fourth power. Okay, so now it's the product rule. So I have those specialty ones. I've got the chain rule. I've got all four cast of characters. Now I'm just going to plug it into the product rule. So I have derivative of the first times the second. plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, so this is our derivative. This works. This is a great answer. Okay, so this one is, is perfect. If you want to take it one step further and get extra credit, you would factor out, see the only thing we could factor out is 2x plus 1 to the fourth. That's all we can factor out. And I have uh, 1 over x times 2x plus 1. So remember, we, we took out four of them. I have five, so that's why I have one left. And then over here, I have a 10 left and an ln of 5x left. Okay, because we took out 2x plus 1 to the fourth power. So this is all I can do. Now, I could simplify right here and write it as 2x plus 1 over x. But again, it doesn't really do much for me. Um, but you can. You can write it that way if you want. But it doesn't change anything. Okay, so these ones that have a lot going on, what I want you to do is I want you to try to break it into small pieces. And that's why when I looked at D, I went, okay, I have two parts. That means I'm using the product rule. And then I deal with the first part, the ln of 5x, and then I deal with the second part, the 2x plus 1 to the fifth. And then I put it all into the, the product rule. But if you break things down into smaller pieces, it doesn't look so overwhelming. So any questions on that one? Because I want to get to the implicit and the the, um, the related rates. No. OK. 
Okay. All right. So implicit differentiation, we're not going to do all of them. We're going to do the two in the middle because these two have the product rule involved. And that seems to be where most people get, um, get lost. So we'll just do B and C. So you can go back later and do A and D. You'll, you'll be able to see the solutions um, when I post those later. So with B, so again, how I know, all right, I got X's and Y's. That means I have to do implicit differentiation, right? So I'm going to put my D, DX. So this is going to be super important. If it's asking you to solve, get the derivative in terms of X. That's your d dx, okay? So I have d dx of 2xy plus d dx of 5x to the fourth minus d dx of y squared equals d dx of 10. So now I can plug in my values. Okay, now I notice I have product rule here. This is product rule. So I want to I want to come over here and I want to get all the information written down first. So this is for B. Oops, for B. So my first is two x. The derivative of the first is two. My second is y. And so this is where you have to look at it and go, okay, I'm looking for d dx of y. I'm looking for the derivative of y. So this is where you get your dy dx. Okay, so now once I get my forecast of characters, now I can start writing everything out. So I have the derivative of the first, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So all of this is all of this. And that's what I'm noticing with students is they get confused as to how much they've done. So just remember, I know it's, it, it spreads it out. Whenever you use that product rule, it is gonna spread it out. Okay, now I just keep going. Plus the derivative of five X to the fourth in terms of X, the variables are the same. So I'm just gonna use my power rule. These, my variables are different. So I'm gonna use the implicit differentiation. And the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, so now I have two dy dx's, so I'm going to isolate those. So I'm going to move my 2y over and my 20x to the x to the third over. So I'm going to subtract 2y and subtract 20x cubed. So I get two, negative 2y minus 20x cubed on this side. And over here, I have 2x dy dx minus 2y dy dx equals my negative 2y minus 20x cubed. And now I can factor my dy dx out. And now I can divide. Okay. So that is my derivative in terms of x. Okay, now I could factor out a two because all four terms have a two in it. But if this was on a test, this would be a perfectly good answer. I wouldn't worry about that too, but you can if you want. Okay, so with that one, I know there's a lot going on in it. So that's why I wanted to do it because you have to be organized. You have to look at it and go, okay, product rule right here. I'm looking at the derivative in terms of X. It's not in terms of time, it's in terms of X, which makes it different, okay? And then 
keeping track of what spot are we at. We've done the product rule and now we have to do it. 5x to the fourth and then we have to do y squared. Okay. So any problems, any questions on that one? And I know Zoom doesn't, um, is not super conducive to you guys sitting there writing it down. Um, but I'm telling you, that's the only way you'll get good at this is if you actually follow along and, and actually write it out. So if you are doing that, that's you're doing exactly what you should be doing. Okay. All right, let's try C. So C, I immediately see, oh, product rule. So I'm going to set up my forecast of characters. So the first is x squared. Derivative of the first is 2x. <clears throat> the second is y. The derivative in terms of x of y is dy dx. Okay, so I have the derivative in terms of x of x squared y equals 7. So now I'm going to, I have my forecast of characters already, so I'm good to go. And that's why I always, I always notice the product rule first. Because as soon as I set up my forecast of characters, then I'm good to go. I don't have to stop and think about what the next step is. I have all my characters right here. So I have derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second equals the derivative of seven is just gonna be zero. So this one is really nice and clean, right? I have one dy dx, that's what I wanna solve for. So I'm gonna bring my two xy over. So I have x squared dy dx equals a negative two xy. I'm gonna divide both sides by x squared. So I get dy over dx equals, and now I can simplify. I have an one X on top and I have two X's on the bottom. So I can get rid of the one on top and still keep the one on the bottom. And that is my derivative. Now, one thing that you, that I want you to notice is with both of these here, on B, I had two different terms with a Y in it. Did you notice we have two different dy dx's? On C, I only have one term with a Y, which means I only have one, y d, one dy dx. So that's something that you can kind of keep track of that makes it a real quick um, check to make sure that you're doing it right. Make sure that you have the d, all the dy dx's that you need. Like in A, you'll only end up with one dy dx. In D, you'll only end up with one dy dx. So it's only when you have two different terms with a y in it that you'll have two dy dx's. And I'll never give you one. I won't give you one with three dy dx's. That would be, it's not impossible. It just adds another layer to it. Okay. So any comments, any questions on implicit? Differentiation. No, Miss. Uh, the only thing in case that I want to like uh, review for the uh, for the test, mm -hmm. where can I see these videos? Like the class. Um. It it's in your um Canvas class. Okay. Yeah, let me show you. It's it's in your modules. Everything for this class is in modules. So right now we're in module two. So Zoom recordings for module two. That's where that's where I'm putting everything. Here is our, our all of our documents that I'm using, and here's all the Zoom recordings. So like after today, 
all once this because YouTube takes a little while for it to upload, but I I pull it off of Zoom, upload it to YouTube, and then I can put it in the classroom. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So that's where they and and every module has this Zoom recordings module, and then each that's just that's just our class. But each, here's um, videos on implicit differentiation. So if you want to just look at another view of implicit, then here's videos just on that. It's not the teaching. It's not the, the uh, one note. It's just me teaching. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last thing. Let's get to these related rates. So related rates is, again, it's a combination of implicit differentiation with any of the other tools. And in these particular ones, the only real tool that you're gonna need is the um, product rule. Um, but in your, and this is an equal sign here, not a plus, that's an equal sign. Um, in your um, My Math Lab or in your, um, the, the test itself, any of the related rates, the ones that you'll see is maybe E raised to a function. That might be one of the tools that you'll see um, or the product rule. So let's go ahead and do all three of these just because it's good practice for us. So A, first thing I see is the product rule. Okay, as soon as I see that, I go, okay, I got to make sure that I have my forecast of characters. I also notice, what am I finding? I am finding dx dt. Well, now it changes because now I have it in terms of time. That's what that t represents. So with all of these, I'm going to be using d dt, which adds another layer to this because I'm not finding the derivative in terms of of x anymore. I'm finding the derivative in terms of time. So even when you know it's just implicit differentiation, always notice what you're looking for. That variable on the bottom makes a big difference in how you walk through this process. Okay, so here we go. I have my first, I'm going to set up my forecasted characters first. So I have negative 2x. So remember what I'm doing is I'm finding the derivative of negative 2x in terms of time, not in terms of x anymore. So my derivative is going to be negative 2 dx dt. It's different because we're looking at it in terms of time. All right, and then my second one is my y. So again, I'm finding the derivative of y in terms of time. So this is my dy dt. That's the derivative. Okay, so now I can set this up. I have d dt of x squared. And then I have uh, d dt of negative 2xy. And then I have uh, d, uh, d dt of a negative y squared equals the derivative of 7. Okay. Now, you can use this minus sign here, and I could use this minus sign here, but because I use the negative as my first term, that's why I put it after, after the DDT instead of in front of it. So don't let that negative throw you. Okay. All right. So here we go. The derivative of x squared in terms of time is 2x peeled that two off and I have dx dt left. And then I have the derivative of a product. So I have 
um, the derivative of this first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, so all of this is my product rule. Okay, so I can't forget this negative y squared. So the derivative of negative y squared is minus 2y and then dy dt equals zero. Okay, now yesterday when students were doing this, they tried to um, rearrange it to where at dx dt was by itself, which is fine, but that is a lot of rearranging of variables. So what I like to do is I now go in and just plug my values in because then it's easier to solve. So I have two, the x is two, the dx dt is what I'm looking for, And then uh, negative two times my y is negative one. I just rearranged, I just brought that y over here. And then I have dx dt again. And then minus two, my x is two, and my dy dt is negative one. And then two, my y is negative one, and my dy dt is also negative one. Okay, so now I can just calculate, right? I'm, I'm getting it down to where I only have one dx dt left. Okay, so I have four dx dt plus two dx dt, and then negative two times two times negative one is positive four. Negative two times negative one times negative one is a negative two. So do you see how I'm kind of simplifying it and sifting it down to where I'm only going to get one answer? So now I can combine that and I can combine this. Okay, so this is kind of what you were talking about before, Evan. The, because I'm adding these two, now I can add these two like terms. So I have four of them and two of them. Now I have a total of six of them. Okay, so now I'm just going to solve for dx dt. So I have um, 6 dx dt equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 6. So my dx dt is negative 1 third. Okay, so take a look at that. See if you have any questions. The dy d3 was already known, right? Yes, so the dy dt um, was negative one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this, again, this higher order one, don't worry about this. We're not doing that. That's not going to be part of the test. Okay. All right. So let's try. It looks like we'll have time for one. We'll, we'll go through one and then maybe two. All right. So um, B, company's profit from selling X units. So again, super important to know what your variables represent. Okay, so X represents the number of units. Of an item, P equals 900X minus one half X squared dollars. Okay, so P is your profit. If sales are growing at a rate of 15 per day, find how rapidly profit is grown in dollars when 500 units have been sold. So this is, remember, going through those three questions. What are we finding? What do we know? And then what's the connection? So the connection is our function. It's P equals 900 X minus one half X squared. Okay, that's our connection. What are we looking for? We're looking for how rapidly the profit is growing. 
So we are looking for DP over DT. How rapidly the profit is growing. So anytime there's a change, you're looking at a derivative. And then what do we know? We know that the sales is growing at a rate. So the number of units is growing at a rate. The number of units is growing at 15 per day when 500 units have been sold. Okay, so that's why it's super important to know what your variables represent. P is profit, X is number of units. So if the number of units is growing, that's your DX, DT, and then the 500 units is the X value. Okay, so let me move this over so we can see this. So I'll write it over here. So this is B. So we are looking for dp dt we know that dx dt is 15 and we also know that the number of units is 500 and our connection is p equals 900 x minus one half x squared okay so because we are finding dp dt, we're going to do a d over dt for each unit. So p equals 900x minus 1 half x squared. OK? So now it's implicit differentiation. As soon as you get, you pull that information out and you know what the connection is, now it's just a matter of using your, your implicit differentiation skills. Okay, so the derivative of P in terms of time is dP dt. That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna be good there. The derivative of 900x is 900. Peeled that off, what's left is dx dt. The derivative of 1 half x squared, 2 times 1 half is just 1. So 1x one and then dx dt. Okay, so here's what I did. So 1 half of 2 is just 1. Okay, so now this one's straightforward. All I got to do is plug my values in. So 900 times 15 minus. 500 times 15, that is what our, how our profit is changing. So we have um, 13,500 minus 7,500. So dp dt equals 6,000, okay? So now this is where you're gonna earn extra credit. What does your 6,000 mean? So remember what we were looking for, you can always go back to the question and go, okay, how can I word this? So it's asking how rapidly profit is growing when 500 units are being sold, okay? so. This dp dt means that our profit is increasing by $6,000 when 500 units are sold at um, a rate of 15 per day. Okay, so this would be how you would find how you would get extra credit. This is your extra credit right here. Okay, so do the work, then interpret your answer. Profit is increasing by $6,000 a day when 500 units are sold at a rate of 15 per day. Okay, so again, this, this whole idea of interpreting what a derivative is, it's very specific to a very um, specific time. Right. If we increase our number of units or or decrease how the rate that they're sold, that's going to change what our profit is doing. OK, 
okay? But but the, the math part is the same. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop there. We have one more, but um, you, you'll be able to look at the, um, I have these all, all completed um, on a solutions page. So I will post that as soon as we're out of class today. Um, so any questions on the test, anything that you need specific um, concerns over? Are you good to go? <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, I think that was good. Okay. All right. So remember, you will be submitting your work. Um, so make sure that you have paper, pencil, erasers if you need it. Um, make sure that you um, show everything, every possible thing that you can, because that's what I graded on. Um, and then um, you'll submit it. And um, I think what I'll do this time, instead of me, you know, double checking, I, you, you've already submitted once, you guys should be good to go. Um, if you, I'll, I'll put you, once you're done with your test, you'll go into a breakout room. So that way you can submit your work and, and um, do all of that. And then um, if you have trouble, then you can call me into your breakout room and I can help you submit the work. But otherwise, um, as soon as it's submitted, you're, you'll be good to go, okay? So I will see you guys on Thursday. Don't be late so that you have the full amount of time. What time should we be there? 11. 11. Same, okay. same time as class. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. See you have Thursday. You too.